Hi crafty friends, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming and on this uh, video I'm going to show you part two of my secret sauce. We're going to talk about legs and what the deal here is is we're talking about how you can take plain inexpensive hardware store lumber and turn it into risers uh, that look pretty fabulous and um, if you missed the video on part one of Secret Sauce where I showed how to actually do this technique, um, you can check it out either on YouTube or in my videos here at Facebook. But you should definitely take a peek at it because it's super easy and it makes a big difference, I think. But anyways, today what we're going to talk about are legs and feet. I have a ton of ideas to share with you. Um, it's going to be I'm gonna just ramble for probably 30 minutes, but you might wanna get um, a pen and paper out if you want to know where to get the different pieces that I will be using. All right, so let me, so I just got these out right here just to show you a little bit, here's even another, a little bit of the variety that you can achieve and let's actually, let's just talk about them one by one. Okay, this is the most simplistic kind of foot. This, these have lost those little pads. Um, I need to get some more. This is the most simplistic kind of a foot. It's just a round ball that has a flat top. Let me see if I have some here in my little stash of feet. I do. Um, these are great. They come from Hobby Lobby. See, they're flat on the top. And um, they're this brand wood pile they come in a bag that looks like this i don't know you get some really weird number like seven or nine pieces um they want to make you buy another bag uh, for about maybe five dollars and if you watch you can find them on sale so to do these um let's jump ahead and i'll just tell you the technique that i do uh, so this is the um, reverse secret sauce, which I'll be teaching you in an upcoming video. But to make the little stained feet, or are these completely natural? Nope, they're stained a little bit. I just took some of that stain, that gel stain that we used yesterday, which looks like this. If you want, I didn't think to put any links in here. If you want the link to this gel stain, it's from Maker Studio. I'd be glad to get you one. I might drop one in a couple of places. So this is very watered down. And basically all you're going to do is drop your piece in here, swish it around, bring it out, and lay it on a paper plate overnight. And that's it. And using that exact same technique, I stained these little balls. It came off of my tic-tac-toe board that I got at Goodwill this last week. I stained these a darker color to go with one of our projects. And this, these little blobs here are from what I actually used. But it's super simple, and you don't even have to get your hands messy if you just use a little plastic spoon and you dilute your, I don't know if I can tip it over far enough for you to see, you dilute whatever stain you have left after you did your piece, really dilute it. Okay, so let's go back to the actual legs. All right, so the most simplistic, where did it go? The, um, oh, it's right here. Okay, the most simplistic kind are these just little round with a flat top. You can get these in a couple of different sizes. So that's one option, and that's what I have going on here. And that is also what I have going on on this piece, but... I painted them with that biscuits and gravy paint that I showed you yesterday that looks like this. It's a little two ounce container. Um, so, and they have the little pads. I need to figure out where those are. I know I have a gajillion of them here. Um, and painted, they kind of go with the edge, which I like this look a lot. Okay, so let's set these two over here. That's the first leg. Okay, then the next leg I want to show you is a leg that you can create by combining two pieces. Okay, I'm combining these little candle holder things that are this same brand from Hobby Lobby. 
and you get a package of seven or nine, some weird number, with these little bun feet that are called toy wheels. I guess if you're making wooden cars, that's what these are actually for. Okay, so that's what that looks like. And what I like to do is uh, glue the two pieces together like this. Oops. <laughs> Sorry, okay, now that piece is gone. Let me find another one. Did I ever tell you that I have been known to be super clumsy? Hey Dana, thank you so much for the stars. I really appreciate that. Okay, so like this. And I, I do it, I glue this piece on the hollow part so that the whole surface of this can get glued underneath the piece. And here is an example of this exactly. Except it looks like I had smaller pieces for this one, but they were the same shape. Exactly, can you see? And this one also has the same idea. Can you see how the, how do I hold this? Get a hold of this a little better. So you're gonna attach your two pieces before you glue them to this. And um, I put the little pads on the bottom to help cover up these little holes. But this, um, this one I did in the, in the biscuits and gravy as well to match the side. And here's the secret sauce. I'm gonna show you the pieces that we made yesterday in just a minute, okay. And this one right here, I just wanna give you guys a ton of ideas. And I want you to think outside of the box a little bit. And um, if you watch DIY Dreaming, you know that I'm pretty frugal, I really am. And so I don't wanna spend 12 or 15 or even more dollars on legs or feet for one of these trays that I made out of hardware or hardware store lumber that's worth $2, you know? I don't want to do that. So I'm always looking for the most affordable, nice looking way to go about it. Anyways, these legs, what I wanted to point out, they're the same idea as what I just showed you. It's a combination of two pieces. The cut here was slightly smaller, but I, um, I did the reverse secret sauce on these also. And this is reverse secret sauce. This is one of those wood boards that I showed you yesterday. It's the same brand as this one. And I, if you would like a link, they're a lot, they're, they're super nice quality. They're from a restaurant supply store, online store, and they're around four to five dollars a piece, depending on um, how many you buy. So if you're interested in the link, I don't make anything on that, just so you know. It's just, I found something great that I wanna share with you guys. Anyways, so it's the same piece, basically. And I did the same finish on both of them, the reverse secret sauce. Okay, so that has the reverse secret sauce on the legs as well. All right, let me dig in my little bag here of goodies. Um, here's an example of some of these, but just smaller. You do need one side to be flat so you can attach that to the underneath of your, your piece of wood, okay? Um, so these are called Ball Knob 3 16th Hole, also from Hobby Lobby. Hobby Lobby is a great place to get legs and feet. Um, what else do I have in here? Well, these are just round. Okay, these are meant to be doll heads, and I have a whole bag of them that I got at a thrift store in Boise, Idaho when I was visiting my mom um, over the summer, I believe it was, and for nothing, so I had to get them. So I, was, I bought them, and I was just thinking that I could either drill a hole underneath my surface and use the E6000 glue, which we'll talk about that in just a minute, to glue these on and use these for big round feet, or I could cut that off and possibly combine it with another piece. Um, okay, so 
my my favorite most favorite legs are these legs that come from Hobby Lobby. They're also the most expensive ones. They look like this. This is reverse secret sauce, which I will teach you guys in a future Facebook video. Aren't those the cutest legs ever? Unfortunately, they're like $3 a piece. But if you can possibly get to Hobby Lobby when I, they have a sale on the wood pieces and when they allow the sale to apply to things that are under $5, because that seems to be a thing there, um, grab them. These are in the wood section right by these, but these are curtain finials, okay? And um, I didn't say any of my normal stuff. Hello, everyone. Uh, as you're hopping on, say hi. Let me know if you have any questions along the way. Feel free to sprinkle. Did you know there is a DLY Dreamer? Oh my word. Hmm. No, I did not. Uh, people are interesting. Um, okay, so this is what they look like. I took these off of, I'm so, I'm such a repurposer. I took these legs off of something that I wasn't going to keep anymore. And I will repaint them whatever color the next time I want to. That was my phone ringing. My friend was calling. Uh, because they're, this is like $12 worth of legs. So I wasn't going to throw them away or donate them or anything. I was going to keep them for myself. All right, let's talk about other ideas for legs. Let me put these guys away. Okay, at Lowe's, they have these. And they're with the, the actual pine that you can have cut to make your risers. This is what the tag looks like. Hardware, four inch early American table legs is what it says. These are around $1.50 a piece. Not too bad. The only thing is, <laughs> um, when I asked the guy there about using these for one of my risers, he said, well, you'll have to buy the the metal thing that this screws into, but the metal things are almost $5 a piece and they're, they're not even visible. So I said, no way, <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Hey, Cindy, thank you for the stars. Um, so I asked him, could I just drill a hole underneath my piece and coat this with E6000 and, and put that in there and use that that way without the $20 worth of metal pieces. And he said, yeah, you probably could. So um, this is a good option as well. They're the tallest ones that I have. Okay. Um, let's see. Also, the smallest ones that I have are these. This came from Walmart. They're called, it's called an eight piece cap assortment. And let me show you, I used them to make these legs. And all I did was, open this. I took the bigger one, there's two sizes here, and the smaller one, and I attached them together like that with the E6000 and then I, these ones I stained in this cup yesterday or the day before. Same deal as the round ones here. Um, anyways, and then I just glued those underneath. And this whole package here was around two and a half dollars, something like that, from Walmart. It says cap assortment, eight, piece, uh, eight pieces. So these are good for something smaller. The scale is way too little, I think, to use for something big like this. But it's personal preference. And if you can't find legs anywhere, or you don't have a Hobby Lobby, or you know you just can't find anything that's affordable, go look at Walmart in their um, prep section. All right, so do you guys remember me telling you about this tic-tac-toe set that I got at Goodwill this week. Hey Martha, thank you. Uh, well, when I saw them, my first thought was, oh my gosh, I could make legs out of these. 
and I did, I'll show you this in a second, but someone, I can't, I wish I could remember who it was, said I should thread some ribbon or something in between them and make a banner going this way and it would say XOXO. Isn't that smart? I was looking right at these and I didn't even see that. Um, anyways, so these are the two pieces that we worked on yesterday. Um, for this one, I thought we would do the round balls. I have tried attaching legs to a piece. Oh wait, uh, there was one other suggestion. Oops, forgot. These are those little mini Jenga pieces that you can get at Dollar Tree. I did the same thing with these. I dyed them in the little cup of a diluted um, gel stain. You could glue a couple of them together however thick you might want it, or this way. And you could use these to make a leg. So just get creative. I mean, there's so many things that can become legs. Okay, so I thought we would use these round balls for this smaller piece that we did. Look at the secret sauce, didn't that turn out good? So, if you didn't see that video, secret sauce is a way to make cheap hardware, lum hardware store lumber look like vintage farmhouse wood. All right, and this is what this wood would look like if I just stained it. This is what it looks like with secret sauce. So if you haven't seen that video, you should go take a peek. Okay, so what all I would do for this is just take my little four pieces and put a ton of glue on them. I'm gonna lift this up. Put a ton of E6000 glue on them and let them dry overnight. And that is what I will do off camera, but let's do one for right now, just so I can show you. Um, you can choose how far out towards the edges you want your feet to be, or if you want them in, in or, uh, closer to the center. I like them out pretty far. So I'm just going to, this is E6000 that I purchased at Walmart. I believe you can get this at Dollar Tree also. And I think somebody recommended the smaller ones because um, they don't get all clogged up or sealed shut as quick and there's not as much waste. So I'm just gonna put a whole bunch of E6000 here. All right, and then all I would do, can you guys see, is plop it on. And you have a little bit of fiddle time with the E6000 that you can adjust to get it exactly where you want it. But look how nice this matches to the color of the, uh, the piece now. So off camera, I'll finish this. Let's set it right here. Okay. For this one, which we did not decorate and which I decided ultimately that I'm not going to, this is 18 inches long by 10 inches wide. This is with secret sauce, pretty heavy. This is without secret sauce. With secret sauce, without. And this one we also distressed a little bit with the, that chain and a hammer. You can use screwdrivers, um, an ice pick, whatever you have. We just whacked the heck out of it. We didn't even do this one very much, but you can see some of the distressing that we did. And these big lighter areas are the secret sauce, okay? But for this one, I thought, why don't we use some of these X's from that tic-tac-toe set, but I wanted to take it a little step further and I painted one side of them with the same biscuits and gravy paint that is this. So if you're interested, let me know and I'll get you links to the, the gel stain and the paint. So I would put these on the outside and let's do one while I have you here and I will finish this off camera. I want to tell you a little bit about different colors of stain that you can use also. So I don't wanna use 
all my time just gluing legs onto these pieces. Okay. So I put a generous amount on there and I would just plop these sort of just for fun at an angle on each corner. Or you could do them straight, whatever you like better. But I think that these could be super cute. So just, you know, be thinking as you're out and about about the different things that you want to find. And, um, you know, get creative and think outside of the box. I'm looking for my Vaseline, my uh, crafting Vaseline. You guys, <laughs> I have not dropped so many things in a live video as I have today. Okay, so this E6000 glue, it has a real propensity to glue itself shut. I'm gonna just wipe off the top of it just a little bit, and then I'm taking a little dab of my, um, my Vaseline, and I'm just putting that on the very top, and then I will put my cap back on it. And one of my followers, Pat, she's such a sweetheart, she gave me this tool to use with my E6000 so that I can get every single last drop out of it. You have to wait until after you've started it to get it on. So that just twists and you can use that to get your, your glue out. So that is what I will, do, will be doing with this one. Can you see how it's at an angle? All right, where can I put this? Okay, um, I wanted to tell you about the different colored stains and let you know that your, your pieces can look virtually however you like them to look. This one right here was done with the black. Uh, it's called Windsor Black, I believe, stain, uh, st gel stain from Maker Studio. And I can get you a link for that. This one right here, by comparison, this one right here, was done with the gray stain. Okay, there's those two. And then this one was done with the hazel mahogany that we use today. Let me see if I can get a of all three of these. So you can see your pieces can have a very different look depending on which stain you use, how heavy you apply your secret sauce. If you beat up your pieces before, um, before you make them and, um, and just, you know, the process. Isn't this cute? Hey Martha, thank you for the stars. I want to show you here. I think that's pretty much it. If you decide to make some of these risers, I would love to see your finished ideas and I would love to know if you have some ideas for feet that I have not suggested yet. Um, share them here and share them over at Dreamy DIY so that we can all get tons more ideas. Um, and I know most people like things to be easy to find, uh, you know, not some huge search uh, that you have to do, and then pretty affordable. So if you haven't already joined Dreamy DIY, that's that crafting group that I put together for us to share ideas and photos. It's free. Um, there's no charge associated with that. It's for anyone who wants to join it. Um, there's only two rules. One is that you cannot use that platform to promote whatever wreath business or whatever you might um, do, you know, Mary Kay or whatever. I'm not picking on, on those two. I love both of those. Um, and then the other one is that I ask that you please don't share other crafters videos because then I get a hundred questions and it's so funny. Yesterday somebody shared one of Sweet Barb's videos from the um, Shabby Tree and I got questions about how to do her projects. I'm like, do I look anything like her? No, I do not. <laughs> but anyways, I just ask that you don't share other 
crafters videos. So if you want to see Christ and Crafting tomorrow on Sunday, I do that normally between 12 and, and 4, 4.30 p.m. on Sundays. Um, or if you want to see the reverse secret sauce or any of the other craft projects that I have coming up this week, um, to let Facebook know that you want to. You can do that by giving one of these little hearts a thumb, looking to make sure that you've liked and followed uh, DIY Dreaming, say something in the comments, do something or other with those three little dots that appear in one of the top corners. Um, apparently you can set your settings there. Um, obviously I'm not so great with technology, but anyways, if you can figure out how to do that, do that so that you can watch Christ and Crafting tomorrow. That's my favorite day of the week for a project. I love it. And I hope that lots of you guys what about the kids' wooden blocks? Okay, Lena, that's a great idea. And you know what? Let me show you guys one more thing and then I promise I'll stop talking. And let you guys get going. Okay, I don't think she's referring to these, but I am always on the lookout and I got this huge bag at Goodwill of blocks that are too bright right now, so I probably will soak them in stain. And I could use these, or I could, there's crafting blocks that are a little bit smaller that you could use too. Hey Valerie, thank you so much for the stars. Um, so that is definitely a good option. Thank you for suggesting that. Glass knobs, oh my goodness, Lynn. I would absolutely love that, unless they're like eight or $10 a piece, and then that would be way too rich for me. Uh, anyways, as soon as I hop off here, I will look through all your comments. And if you have questions, I'll get you answers as quickly as I can. Oh, thanks, Kim. I appreciate that. Um, I'll get you answers as quick as I can. I'm going to drop a few links so that if you want to look at the gel stain or the biscuits and gravy paint. They have other colors too. And they have other stain colors too that I just showed you these things right here. So I'll drop those links in a couple places in the comments or just let me know that you want one. And what is the crafting page called? Thank you, Marilyn. Okay, it's so this page you're on right now is DIY Dreaming. The um, group is Dreamy DIY. It's two words there though. D-R-E-A-M-Y space D-I-Y. So you can just put that in your search bar here at Facebook and it should take you over to that page. Hey Kathy, thank you so much for the stars. I really appreciate that. You guys are so generous and forgiving to me when I don't quite have my act 100% together. I really appreciate that. Anyways, um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so it's Dreamy DIY. Just type that in your search bar here at Facebook. It should take you over there. Ask to join and be sure that you answer the two questions, which are the two things I talked about a minute ago. We'd love to have you join, you, join us. And then here's my suggestion if you're new to that page. Don't look through the bazillions of comments because that'll take you. I mean, there's over 10,000 people part of that group and there's probably over 5,000 photos. Maybe, maybe not quite, but there's a lot. So if you just click on the photos button, you can seriously just scroll down and look at every photo that's ever been shared there. And there's some great ideas. Ideas, uh, I get ideas from that all the time. And I know you guys do too. Anyways, all right. Oh, Mary, I know you can't hear and for some reason, Facebook is not letting me put um, closed captioning on. I tried um, completely resetting my iPad that I work off of. Um, I'm gonna keep trying because I want, I like it much better when I can put closed captioning on. Um, so I'm very sorry about that. I hope I can figure out what is going on very soon. Anyways, you guys have a blessed rest of your day. And I will see you tomorrow, Sunday, for Christ and Crafting. All right, bye.